Hey, welcome to I Flip for Math MathCast Lesson 10-1, Add and Subtract Fractions with Like Denominators. I'm Mrs. Gooding and our quote tonight is by Ed McCauley. He played for the St. Louis Hawks and the St. Louis Bombers and then the Boston Celtics a long time ago. He said, when you are not practicing, remember someone somewhere is practicing and when you meet him, he will win. I think that just reminds us that um, we've always got to keep on our toes and really stay at working hard on our math and everything that we do, we should do as well as we can. Our learning goal tonight is to add and subtract fractions with the same denominators, and that's what like denominators means, the same denominators. Here's our individual lesson learning goals. We're gonna add fractions with like or the same denominators. We're gonna subtract fractions with like denominators. We're gonna simplify if we need to using the cake strategy. We're gonna convert from improper fractions to mixed numbers if we need to. And when we're working word problems, we're going to look at those key words to determine what operation to use. Here's our vocabulary for tonight. Remember, you've got to remember this is so key. Fractions represent an amount greater than zero and less than one whole. So they, they're within a very small amount of space unless they're a mixed number. And then they'll come after, like if they were seven and a half, it's gonna come between seven. It's greater than seven and less than eight. The term like is used to mean the same and like is the more sophisticated math term. So try and use that. Sum is the answer to an addition problem, and difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. And there are some pictures of Ed McCauley when he played um, for St. Louis, and also there's him when he's older, and you can see some of his trophies and things behind him. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame, too. Here's our first example, 7 eighths plus 3 eighths. Let's go ahead and check that out. So I wrote this horizontally like I typed it, and then I wrote it vertically like I want you to always work your problems. Remember we read it 7 eighths plus 3 eighths, so 7, read it left to right and top to bottom, 7 over 8 plus 3 over 8. When you have like denominators or the same denominators, you can add them horizontally like this. If we were adding with unlike denominators, I would want you to add them vertically. But we're going to go ahead and just add these. Our denominator always stays the same if it's the same already. So we have 8 and 8. That's going to stay the same. It's not going to change because the size of our pieces isn't going to change. We already have the same sized pieces. And then we're just going to add our numerators. 7 plus 3 is 10. Now I did this one on purpose in the example because this is an improper fraction, meaning that there's a hidden whole number in here. And we know that because our numerator is greater than our denominator, and that would never happen with a true fraction. And again, this is just like our division lesson that we did yesterday, 10 divided by eight, or excuse me, eight goes into 10. Yeah, 10 divided by eight. Hmm, I'm losing my mind tonight, it must be spring break. So we're gonna write our 10 in the house, 10 divided by eight. And eight goes into 10 one time, eight times one is eight. 10 minus 8 is 2, and I have nothing else to bring down, so 2 will be my remainder, but remember when we're doing it with fractions, 1 is my whole number, and then my remainder is my numerator, and my denominator stays the same. It's still going to be 8. We're not going to change the size of our pieces at all. So 10 eighths as an improper fraction converts to a mixed number, 1 and 2 eighths. There's our whole number and there's our problem. Now we're going to try a practice problem. Three-fourths minus one-fourth. Addition and subtraction are the exact same. You follow the same rules. So go ahead and try that. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write one-half? Let's see how we did that. It has a different denominator. So I've rewritten it both horizontally and vertically, but remember you make less mistakes when you work the problems um, writing the fractions vertically like this. So let's go ahead and do it. We know our denominator is going to stay the same. And then we just subtract our numerators. Three minus one is two. Now, here's the key. Two fourths, those are both even numbers, so I know this fraction needs to be simplified. It's a good idea to try to simplify every fraction, but 
we'll, we'll simplify this one by making a cake. So I'm going to make the bottom layer of my cake and put both parts of my fraction inside the cake. I'm writing it horizontally this time, 2 fourths. And then remember, we ask ourselves what number goes into both 2 and 4. And 2 is the only number other than 1, so we'll put a 2 outside. Now it's a division problem. 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 4 two times. Make our second layer. What number will go into both 1 and 2? Two? 1 is the only one. 1 goes into 1 one time, and 1 goes into 2 times. Remember, when we're simplifying, we say simplify, make a cake, look for the bride and groom. So we're looking for this number on top. And we know that we've gotten there when we have a 1 here on our top next to our top layer, and we've repeated that same fraction twice. So 2 fourths equals 1 half, 1 half, 1 half. This is our final answer, and this is the correct answer one half. In fraction work, fractions need to be simplified to be correct. Number two, three tenths plus seven tenths. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write one? Ah, now you know I'm crazy. We better check that out and see how we did that one. So we're adding three tenths plus seven tenths. We know our denominator is going to stay the same, so we'll write our ten here. And 3 plus 7 is 10. Hey, but we also know that to be a true fraction, our numerator has to be less than our denominator. And it's not. It's the same. It's equal to. Well, when our numerator is the same as our denominator, 10 would go into 10 one whole time. So anytime your numerator is the same as your denominator, it equals one whole. Because that means 10 out of 10 parts that's one whole shape. If it was a pizza, it would be 10. I ate 10 out of 10 pieces of pizza. That means I ate the whole pizza. And sometimes I feel like doing that. Let's go ahead and try another one. Number three. This one might look a little tricky, but I think it will be easy when you write it vertically. 1 8 plus 5 8 minus 3 8 equals. Remember to use your order of operation rules, PEMDAS so that you can work this problem and get the correct answer. Pause it and push play when you're ready. Did you write 3 eighths? Hmm, let's see how we did that one. Remember that PEMDAS in the order of operation tells us that we work whatever's in parentheses before we do anything else. So I'm going to work this subtraction problem inside the parentheses. And I'm going to work it right underneath it, just like we would do an algebra problem using order of operations. So my 5 minus 3 is 2, and my denominator stays the same, so I now have 2 eighths. I'm done with this part of my problem, so I'm going to bring down everything else around it from up above. So now I have 1 plus 2 is 3, and my denominator stays the same. That looked super complex, and it was really super easy and fun, too. Time to practice word problems. And in fraction work, you're going to be doing a lot of your fraction work with word problems, so pay close attention to this one. Ed McCauley played one-eighth of a basketball game during the first half. He played three-eighths of the game during the second half. How much of the game did he play in all? Simplify if needed. Look for key words to tell you what operation to use. Pause and push play when you're ready. Remember to write it out in a sentence. Did you write... Ed McCauley played half of the basketball game in all. That in all was the key word that told us to add. He wanted, we wanted to know how much he played for the entire game, so we added those two parts together. And we made sure we wrote it as a complete sentence, but let's check out the actual math computation work. So we'll start by adding our numerators. 1 plus 3 is 4, and our denominator stays the same. These are both even numbers, so I'm going to make a cake to simplify. Make a cake. Simplify. Simplify. Make a cake. Remember to write this as a f let's let's write this as a fraction. Four eighths. Because when we put a fraction in the bottom layer of our cake, we need to make sure it looks like a fraction. What number goes into both four and eight? You could use two, or you could use four. You're going to get the same answer in the end. I'll use two. Two goes into four two times. Two goes into eight four times. 
This will make our, we'll have more layers. What goes into both two and four? Two. Two goes into two one time. Two goes into four two times. One more layer. What goes into both one and two? Just one. One goes into one one time. One goes into two two times. And that is our bride and groom on the top. So four eighths is equivalent to one half, which is simplified. It's time to challenge yourself. Ed McCauley played basketball for 22 80 thirds of his life. What fraction of his life did he not play basketball? Hmm, you may have to think on this one for a while, but you're gonna have fun when it's time to figure it out. Show your work in your flip journal and come back tomorrow ready to check your answer. Finishing up, um, make sure you write down whether you're at a level one, two, or three in your learning and write down any questions you still have. Fantastic fractions, you've completed lesson 10-1. Add and subtract fractions with like denominators. I can't wait to see you tomorrow.